Excellent. Welcome, everyone. We're just going to share this out and pull it up as well so we can see your comments. If you're catching us on the replay, go ahead and type in hashtag replay so we know that you are um, here with us in the zero point. I'm also going to edit the privacy so it can be shared out because that always needs to happen. Beautiful. So welcome, welcome. This is another illuminating talk with the Radiant Evolution Collective. I'm Aurora Light, a conscious creation and voice activation coach and guide and co-founder of the Radiant Evolution Collective with my dear friends and evolutionary partners, soul sisters, Nina Infinity and Radiant Soul Nicole. Uh, ladies, I'll have you introduce yourself again in just a moment. But just wanting to invite people, if you find this conversation illuminating and you're like, gosh, more people need to hear this because it is an activating container, definitely feel free to share it. If you're on YouTube, please like and subscribe. And we are just so happy to be able to create this space, this container for us to share our voices authentically. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, it's kind of a continuation of a conversation that we had last week uh, when we were talking about taking off the masks. And I meant figuratively, but also we're in this space of literally that's what we've been doing. And we as a collective and a group and humanity have been on this journey towards greater and greater authenticity and we just want to talk more about that. So today, I can't wait to have this candid and really raw and real conversation about what that looks like, the challenges, the difficulties, and the payoff from being able to step into an ever-evolving, authentic expression of our beingness. Thank you so much for um, meeting and connecting with me, my friends. Sorry, I had just finished sharing took me a little bit longer today. <laughs> I forgot where I was supposed to share. <laughs> so I waited for Nina to do it first as to not interrupt anybody. So this is me being authentic <laughs> and human and a little bit <laughs> silly sometimes, I suppose. <laughs> That's okay. Hmm. So was I supposed to share who I, who I am? Is that what we were going into? Does that feel authentic to you right now? Or do you want to just jump right in? You get to choose. Like, oh, right. Well, <laughs> yeah, I'm Nicole. I'm Radiant Soul Nicole sometimes as well. And uh, yeah, soul embodiment guide, ecstatic dance facilitator. And honestly, dancing is when I feel the most authentic and most like myself. Um, I love to create experiences to share, uh, to create spaces for people to experience that authentic authenticity through dance as well. And I'm Nina Infinity and I'm a transformational guide and an elemental um, earth priestess. And I also resonate with Nicole about dance feeling so authentic. And that was actually something I just, I did all weekend when I was at a little camp out with some friends and I'm feeling really filled up from that experience and um, yeah, definitely had some, some memories and um, experiences from this weekend in the past around authenticity. So I'm excited to share more about that with you all today. Make that three. I feel the most like myself when I am dancing, especially when it's in a container like a safe space for transformation and and that's our jam that's that's how we met um not just any old dancing but with hula hoops of all things and before that we were all also like ravers and we'd love to go to festivals and uh, we've, we've done that with each other too but i know for myself when i would be at a music festival or just somewhere with a dance floor it was always my way of connecting with the universe and as me and I just those nights that you'd be dancing for hours and hours I would find those places of me just being so in flow and so present and it really did 
feel like an authentic expression of my essence through my movement, especially once I would get into it. When I was younger, it would take a long time to kind of warm up into that unless I just happened to feel really safe or I happened to be really intoxicated, <laughs> which was sometimes a gateway to that. And uh, I can I can usually drop in quite a bit faster now and completely sober, but being able to move just as me without thinking, oh, what do I look like? Does this like, is anybody looking at me? Like all of that and just getting rid of it and dropping into the present and letting myself express completely freely is literally one of my favorite things in the world. So I'm so glad that we get to take what we have done on the dance floor and in our classes and really start to apply that to the rest of life, how we live now and infuse it into all the other stuff that we teach. So yeah, it's really interesting how it all began though. Yeah, that reminds me actually of um, something you mentioned on an Illuminate chat a couple of weeks ago. I think you were saying about how Suze said that she, she sees you living the way that you dance which is in that flow. And like you just said, it's so beautiful to be able to bring forth those experiences or those, those ways of being that we feel when we're doing our passions, whether it is dance or whether it's something else uh, for someone watching, that that can be like a training ground. It can be a, an opportunity to practice um, being that way of being and I like to think about that in or I like to share about that when I'm I'm in ceremony as well and welcoming people to share and also um, when we're listening to someone else share that's an opportunity to practice being authentic in a safe space in ceremony where we're sitting together we're all there for the same goal intention purpose to expand to be free and welcome to be ourselves and in those safe small spaces we can try it on and we can see what it feels like to speak from our heart and to take off the mask and then we can bring that out into the world it's like a training wheel so to speak and then that uh, also the other way around we're listening we're practicing listening and being present and, and holding space so yeah, I love, I love that about practicing, you know, creating those neural pathways, and then we get to deepen into that way of being on a, our, our day to day basis. Yes, I'm so glad you went there. Because things are never going to feel natural at first, right? Take dancing as an example, like a new piece of dance choreography or a new hula hoop move, a new way of tying your shoes, a new swimming stroke, whatever it is, it's going to feel weird at first until you've put it into your neural pathways, but then also your muscle memory, but it does get easier. So when we have those safe spaces to practice, we're able to then expand it out, especially since we're holographic fractal beings and we can how we do one thing is how we can actually do everything. And coming from the festival background, like in my teens and twenties, um, I found that to be such a place of freedom and expression. When you'd go to festivals, like we've all been to Astral Harvest and Shambhala music festivals, and um, even in raves where people would be encouraged to dress up in costume or whatever they wanted. And like basically anything went except just a t-shirt with no underwear. That was like the one thing that people were like, no, please don't do that. It's kind of weird and toddler-esque. So when I would be then from a, a transformational festival, a hula hoop festival, a music festival, and return to this normal life, it was always culture shock. It was always very jarring because people would be wearing these figurative masks of not expressing themselves fully, not sharing their heart, and just being really closed off compared to the openness that we would find at these transformational festivals. And I remember returning from one, and I was kind of sad. I was working at a restaurant at the time, and my boss was like, what? Like, what's what's going on? And I was like, oh, it's just, it sucks how people live, you know? Like, being in these places where people are open-hearted and communicating and sharing 
feels so good. Why can't we have that all the time? She goes, well, because life's not a festival. So you can't have that all the time, right? It's never going to be like that. And I basically went challenge accepted. And that was this pivotal moment where I made the decision to create and manifest a life for myself where I got to do that first off and feel free to express myself authentically, but also to can share with other people the safe spaces where they could do that and encourage people to live it. And then <laughs> that's been a wild ride. And now life is honestly that magical. It, it's so wonderful because I've called in people who are also ready to express themselves authentically and play and not hold back the same way as what might be in the mainstream. So I know you guys have been on similar journeys. So let's, let's talk about that. Yeah. So when you were talking, it was just making me think of my own like experience of going to festivals and the evolution of over the years. Like the first time I went in maybe like 2004, I was in my early 20s. I was kind of a bitch. <laughs> judged a lot of people because I was like oh um it smells like hippie down in this park because it smelled like incense and like there was naked people and like oh my god this is really weird so I was I had gone to raves at that point but um yeah the hippie kind of lifestyle aspect of it was like a little bit too much for me and then as I slowly progressed and I like immersed myself in it I'm like oh okay this is fun I actually like this and got a little bit more permission to be myself but I guess I had internalized some of the hippie stuff <laughs> and then I'm like I want to be like this I want to be able to express myself but I also don't want like the real world I'm a hippie because of whatever programming I had around that that was you know whatever hippies are cool I like hippies now and there's nothing wrong with anybody expressing themselves as long as they're not harming other people then I don't care <laughs> what they're doing right um but I wanted so badly kind of and as I went on I wanted so badly to like have that freedom to be myself wherever I went and I did have that same experiences of coming like coming down after coming home from festivals because I'm like oh this is like the one time of year when I really get to be myself and um then I just have to go back to my normal life and I'm like hmm well that's a limiting belief I don't need to have <laughs> I can bring this into my life all the time and I wanted to so badly but I was also still had this all these beliefs that it wasn't safe to be me and didn't have the tools at the time to actually work through them um so really until i was able to i don't even know the evolution of that journey but yeah it was a lot of a lot of internal work of going um allowing myself to be mm, accepting from accepting myself for who i am is and loving myself for who I am is forgiving myself for who I am not. And that's when I, when that dropped into me, I was like, huh, I tried to like examine this on all different like levels and look at it in different ways. And as I was able to, yeah, and I embodied that, I was able to see like, I'm just me. I'm not like, I'm not what, like the box of a hippie is or a yogi is or a spiritual person is or like I had made myself have so many rules. I was also dealing with some health issues kind of this is about a decade ish ago and um, I was like, like I have to eat healthy. I can't deviate from this thing. And I remember at my sister's wedding. Um, I would have smoothies every day for breakfast and she didn't have fresh ginger. She's like, well, we have like the ginger that you could um, like canned, not canned ginger, like ginger that comes in bottles that you can use for cooking or whatever. She's like, could you put that in your smoothie? I'm like, nope, that's got like two extra ingredients in it. There's no possible way I could have that. And that would cause me way more stress because I was like trying to follow these rules and do something so perfectly. And that was creating way more stress and dis-ease in my body than if I'd actually just been like, oh, okay, this is okay. <laughs> like, it's not going to kill me. <laughs> um, and then I could still have my smoothie the way that I liked it with ginger. But I was like, there was just so many boxes that I put myself in because I felt like I needed to be a certain way. Or I was at a music festival and I was like, oh, I want to have a drink. And this is also 
close to a decade ago, but I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have a drink because spiritual people don't drink. And I like literally said something like that to my husband. And and he's like, you know what? The festival organizer is like right there and she is drinking wine out of a paper bag. So like, you know, don't not drink because you think these people will judge you if you're going to drink. Like I had had so many things and being able to clear all those and like, I feel like oh, I can even just feel like the matrix of all of those beliefs and things around me right now. I'm like clearing it all. And I've gotten the so much more freedom now to actually show up as who I am. I'm spiritual and I don't drink anymore because that doesn't feel in alignment with me. But I eat fast food. I do these things that I would have been like, oh, I couldn't do those things before because that's not what spiritual people do. It's so that's where we're like coming into your sovereignty is so important. Testing is this okay for me right now? If it is, do it. If not, then don't like, but don't follow what everybody else is doing or what you think you should do. It's so much so important to do what is authentic for you in that moment. And it takes time to understand that though. And I guess that was that journey that I was on is like, what is authentic for me? I don't know. I had to learn and I had to learn what wasn't authentic and it takes some time. If you've been living in the matrix <laughs> and you're waking up out of that, then it is like kind of a bit of a mind fuck to figure out what, um, what is you, what isn't you. And it's, just takes a lot of practice and eventually though you will find it and you'll find those things that light you up and those are the things that are you the things that like dancing no matter where I was I love to dance and express myself and that brought me into my center hooping brought me into my center and that's where I could really begin to find the truth of who I was which is not any particular thing but a feeling and I guess that's my true soul essence and that's you know takes practice it's awkward to find it and I found pieces of it before and now as I've been practiced over years I'm able to bring that into all aspects of my life rather than just when I went to a certain class or a ceremony or anything doing those specific things and I guess that's the whole process of embodiment too where it's not just one um it's not just the things that you're doing but it's who you are I'm going to end it there because that was a lot. <laughs> mm, I want to hear all about what you're about to say, Nina, too. But I just wanted to say thank you so much for explaining that because I could feel it. I don't know if anyone watching, let us know if you could like literally feel it when she was talking about all those beliefs. The energy got crowded and it felt almost like it was choking off your connection to source. And, um, you know, those are sometimes described as grids, right? Grid systems that we can plug into with beliefs. I've heard, you know, uh, Jason Estes, for example, describe it as sub games that you can be playing where you have to try something on or be a certain way in order to do a thing, right? And you were describing that so beautifully. And it is a choice. So I want to give people just a whole bunch of Forgiveness, if they have been playing these games, if they have been plugged into grids, if they have been doing things because they should, because you know what, until you try them out and realize that they're not actually for you, how are you going to know, right? It's only when we're going too far into it and being like, I have to do this, even if it's not authentically me, that it becomes a bad thing. Right? We want to become empowered, like you were saying, in the serenity to choose instead of going, I can't swear because I'm a spiritual person. F that. Yes, thank you so much for sharing all about your journey, Nicole. And for me, um, as you were sharing, I was having different insights and, and uh, the ability to relate come through. It's been a journey and it is... I loved what you said about, you know, the different camps that, you know, like spirituality, yogi, hooper, da, 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 like it's, it's so interesting because it's like, there's these labels and like headings that we feel like we have to fit under. And it's like, oh, if I'm this person, then I don't do that. And I do do this. Um, I have had that come up for me over my journey where um, I would have that that mindset go through is like, I feel like posting this, or I feel like saying this. 
And then there would be like a filter of like, oh, but you don't do that because that's not how people see you. And once I was able to become aware of that voice, I was able to start questioning it. So it really starts with awareness. And, you know, it is a journey and it's a process to then start to open up to being like questioning it. Well, why, why am I assuming that that's how people see me? Like, and even if that's pe how people see me or some people see me, why do I have to conform to that exact framework? And like you were sharing Aurora, trying it on and seeing that that's not me and then getting a sense of what feels more like me is, has been really, really interesting. It's like that contrast creates clarity. Once we experience something, if we put on a piece of clothing that doesn't fit us, it's too small and it's restrictive, then we're like, oh, it doesn't fit. Otherwise you wouldn't know. And so just experiencing that process and like you were sharing, forgiving ourselves for playing in any of that because it was important to experience to discover what is more of me and knowing that contrast so that it can create that clarity. And yeah, something that I've, um, yeah, on my journey of coming to more and more authenticity, it was really interesting because the event that I was at um, over the weekend, it was just a small camp out with some friends and music and dancing and nature. And it was so beautiful because I actually had gone to a festival out at that land. And it was like a much larger gathering about four years ago. And just having that benchmark, having that um those being out there and having memories of being out there and doing certain activities on the land and being on the dance floor and around the fire visiting with people remembering how much more um I was questioning myself at that point in time I was like a little bit like more reserved a little bit more quiet unsure of really how to sh express myself uh, meanwhile I was a performer and when I'm on stage I can fully step into the spotlight but in social situations back then four years ago, it was so much more quiet. And also I gave myself that label that I was awkward and I would use the hoop as a security blanket at so many events where I would like, like go and hoop instead of talking to people. And so it was <clears throat> really interesting because three years ago, I actually stopped uh, performing and teaching it and actually hooping entirely because I needed to heal an overuse injury in my body and now I'm able to start hooping and dancing more again because that's healing, which I'm so excited about. And yet I have had that opportunity over the last three years to, well, when I first started going to events again, you know, like a house party, a gathering, a potluck, and I didn't have the hoop. It was really a push outside my comfort zone because that was my bubble. That was my security blank. That was my comfort zone um, to just grab it and go hoop and be like, I'm still part of this event because I'm here, but I'm not actually, you know, I wasn't interacting at that, at that depth and that's okay. But how freeing and illuminating it was for me to go to events and feel like, oh, it's actually not that scary to talk to people. <laughs> it's actually, um, you know, like to, to I le really learned how to drop more into authenticity to more, to, to, to drop into listening and space holding as I was talking about before. And also, sharing more about myself and sharing about that journey that I was going through with stepping away from teaching and performing and, and um, everything my life was with hooping and sharing that that story that I was going through the, that experience. So this weekend when I was there four years later, I really had just some moments where I did like some checkpoints where I was like, oh, you know what? Like I'm so much more open now I'm so much more um you know present with with conversations with people and able to open up to share on a a deeper level and yeah it's it was something I really recognized and and celebrated because there was like I mentioned there were so many times where I felt like um I was wearing the mask and I was kind of 
um, operating uh, as like, oh, is this what people expect of me? And now it's, I'm getting this taste of like, and, and, and seeing so many people um, in the community, like I was expressive before, but it's, it's like another level. Like, I think it's, there's so many layers. Um, like Shrek talks about how we're onions. Actually on the weekend, we were talking about how maybe we're like cabbages because cabbages are purple and they're like all squiggly. So they're like a little less straight and they're <laughs> a little more funky. So yeah, there's so many layers to it. So the first time that I ever went to a music festival, I was 15 years ago. That's when I first started hooping it. That blew my mind open around expression and people being themselves and wearing costumes and being like wild and amazing. But there still was over the you know decade, there was still, there was so many opportunities to open up and there was still some residual um, areas, there were some, still some areas where the authenticity wasn't fully shining through. And I've been on that journey to transform that. And so it was really gratifying and beautiful to recognize where I've come to. And I think it's really amazing in our lives when we can look and see um, these checkpoints, these uh, going back to sim similar places um, that we've been before and being like, oh, wow, I'm not the same person that I was. And it would be weird if we were the same person after four years, right? Like, so how cool is it that we could recognize and, and celebrate the growth that we've experienced? Mm. I am celebrating the growth that you've experienced and, and you, Nicole, I mean, and me, because we've known each other for about a decade and it's been just so wonderful to witness and hold space for the transformation and to watch people step into more of who you can see that they have always been. That's the thing, like you, you speak into these transformations, but I've always been able to feel and see like your, your soul. So to me, I, I was like, but this is who you are. Right. And I would have to really look hard to see what you'd be expressing about that maybe shyness and awkwardness because it wasn't who you really were. That was just what you were presenting to the world. So for me, it's like you've just yeah taken off that. It doesn't even feel like a mask, but almost like the, the like layer, like the blanket that was over there. And uh, I totally would love to be a purple cabbage rather than an onion. So I really appreciate that. And you know what, it's really interesting for me. I've never suffered from social anxiety. I've always been quite able to speak to random people and connect with almost anybody. So for me, the journey into authenticity was a little bit different. It was that I was an open book, but you had to sometimes ask the right questions to get to the deepest part of me. So I felt that I was super authentic. I would share anything with anybody, but I wasn't always freely offering that because I had this idea that I was so different that people wouldn't really relate. And you know what, at the time, a lot of the people that were around me couldn't fully relate to who I was. Um, I've always been super magical, super joyful, super enthusiastic. And um, I, I really toned that down a lot because it was too much for a lot of people. But the funny thing was the more I toned myself down and the more I toned down my magic and you know, didn't speak fully into the mystical experiences I had and things like that, um, you know, the less people that also had that vibration and those experiences would find me and notice me, right? Because I wasn't vibing at this very authentic place. I feel like I was wearing, yeah, the, the mask of wanting to like not be too out there because I knew it made people uncomfortable. It was very triggering for people. And there's a part of me that wanted, of course, to stay safe, to fit in, right? And so that brought up some of the witch wounding when I wanted to step into greater levels of authenticity. And let us know if you can relate. So when I'm speaking into the witch wound, it is sometimes in our ancestral lineage, sometimes just in the collective or in our soul of, it is not safe to be your full force, shiny, amazing being that you are because it's too much for people and it can be scary for them. It can be triggering for them. And in the past, it could have been dangerous for you. And maybe this even happened in your childhood where you just be exuberant and people would be like, oh my gosh, like, would you tone it down a bit? Right. So it can come from any place. 
but there's a journey of healing that and coming into a space of feeling safe enough to actually share all of who we are. And whether that's like your magical side or just your, your innermost thoughts and feelings, right? Especially if we're feeling like no one's gonna understand us or that no one is really going to be able to connect with us or appreciate us. Maybe you think you're such a freaking special unicorn that no one's gonna relate to you. Not everybody will. That's okay though, right? But the more you're able to feel safe enough to express yourself authentically, it's like it creates this resonance field of here I am world. It's your vibration, right? Your mojo, your vibes, that feeling, that essence of you. And at first it's going to repel some people away, right? When I really started practicing more and more authenticity, more magic, speaking about my, um, my mediumship and my, um, you know, like visionary stuff, my psychic stuff, some people did like just go, okay, that's not really for me. And they made more space. But then more of my soul family just like rushed into feel the void because they could feel it and they wanted to be around me. So there is an uncomfortable process where it does get a little bit more lonely, you know, but then people in your life that maybe were always there will, will really be like, hey, now there's more room for me or it'll just bring in people that, you know, you're meeting for the first time. And it's honestly the greatest feeling I think I've ever had. Now I cannot count the number of amazing women, especially who, who like me for me, <laughs> without me holding back. Like it's okay for me to be excited about life and expressive and talk about the weird, wonderful, magical, mystical woo stuff that I love so much, right? So it's definitely, that's been my process and my journey, feeling safe enough to be all of me. As you're sharing that, I was thinking about the, the whole concept of dimming our light, like you had learned to turn down the dimmer switch of your light because of the past life stuff. And, you know, oftentimes it can happen in, in our younger years as well. And it's like that we're giving ourselves permission again to turn that light up and to just not dim our shine, to be fully vibrant and that can be like you mentioned triggering for other people and it can be vulnerable to just really like fully open up especially if we're um you know really like ex ecstatic place if we're feeling a lot of joy if we're feeling a lot of happiness and a lot of the world is not to to share the the high highs um, as well as the low lows because that in itself can bring up um, fear to oh is this too positive right now like should it be more somber um, so I've, I've definitely noticed that come up for me in the past as well like am I being too love and light is are people gonna you know be and triggered by that or annoyed by that but really it can it can be so supportive because there are times when I'm going to feel lower and I'm going to be brought up by the people that are brighter and vibrating higher in my life and then there's going to be the opposite where I'm going to be that beacon and I'm going to be that lighthouse and it's beautiful because we we don't all go through the same challenges at the same time so sometimes um, yeah, those around us are going to be illuminating and like the lighthouse for us. And then sometimes we're going to be that for them. And by being our true authentic selves and not being afraid of sharing that joy and that vibrant aliveness, then that serves them as well. That's a, that's just in service and it's not selfish. And we get to just kind of reframe that, that it's, it is actually is for the highest good of all, it's not, it's not all about us. <laughs> it's for all of us. That's a good point, Nina. Um, I know that I think we've talked about this before too, and it's so important for us to yeah, sh show up and be that example in the world. Like 
three of us and probably all the people that are watching are here to create the new earth and to create the new reality that we wish to live in. And without us feeling safe enough to show up and share our light, even when like the world's pretty freaking crazy on the outside right now, there is a lot of stuff. There's a lot of somber stuff happening, you know, seeing more and more evidence of climate change if you're only looking at that stuff and you don't have those examples of people shining up and showing their light sharing their light being the light then the world can seem like a really dark place and you know we're doing a service by showing up and being our authentic selves like whether it's because people are looking on the outside and seeing all of the disarray or whether it is yeah, just internal issues. Like if we didn't have somebody to, you know, show us, for example, like I recovered from this illness or disease or something like that. Like you, we still need to show up and what am I trying to say? Well, there's something else that's wanting to come through and it's not quite, we need to have that permission to be ourselves and be authentic with where we're at in the moment so that, um, other people have that. Other people have permission to be themselves. Uh, last week when it was really hot, we were staying at a hotel and we had to stand in line for the breakfast in the morning. And <laughs> my little daughter, Aurora, was like dancing to the hotel music and stuff. And so Scott and I started dancing with her and people were kind of smiling and stuff. And like, you know, if I was by myself, people would give me weird looks. <laughs> started dancing in line, unfortunately. <laughs> um, and I probably wouldn't do it. But dancing with her, it kind of just lightened the mood for everybody. And it was really like, that's just a you know, small little example of how being authentic can radiate out into the world. And alternatively, it's so important for us as we like, you know, showing up as people that are in a leader space. And it's also so important for us to show the, the darkness or when we're going through these tough times too, because other people also then have the, uh, they can see the example that, you know, like just because you're a healer or light worker or whatever it is you call yourself, there's still times where life is going to be hard and we still have this opportunity. We still get to move through and have these learning experiences and sharing that with people reminds them that like, we're not in this high vibe space all the time. Like it gives people permission to feel the low feeling sometimes too, and that's super important as well. So once again, we come back to a conversation about children being these uh, little tiny masters who can teach us so much about feeling the feelings and not letting them get stuck in us and also about authenticity. While you were speaking into Aurora's uh, dance, it was just making me draw parallels between like toddlers and ravers <laughs> and just like if you've ever seen a toddler who's who's got cool clothes dress themselves or you know like a four or five year old they're just wanting to be they don't care if it matches they just want it to make them feel good and you know I, I see that in festival culture but also more and more in so many different ways and that what gives me so much great hope for humanity because we are at a time right now where we can be more expressive and authentic than ever. You know, there are fewer restrictions on that. It's just amazing to witness. And yeah, if we were only looking at what the news medias would report, uh, the, the major news outlets, the world does look like a dark and stormy, terrifying place. But if you look to what is actually happening on the ground, there are so many humans who are doing incredible, amazing things right now. More people than ever are stepping into their spirituality, their gifts, becoming entrepreneurs, becoming healers. We're just deciding that they're not going to give a crap about what capitalistic society is telling them they should or need to do. And they are bringing forward what feels good. There are probably millions of movements like that all around the world. 
And when you really tap into that, those people, they're the, like the bow of the ship leading the energy of where we are going. And there are some of us, myself included, that can see and feel into those future timelines and the probabilities of where we are going. And it, it's so freaking gorgeous. It makes your head spin and your heart burst open. It's beyond anything that we can really comprehend. And we are the ones that are doing it. Like you were saying, Nicole, we are here to co-create this new experience on the planet, especially right now after COVID with all of this stuff, people have really taken a better look at what is working and what is not working. And I just wanna encourage all of you to allow that and this focus of like, oh, I tried something on and it didn't fit. Maybe for you, that was corporate life. Maybe for you, it was dating somebody or a certain pastime or whatever. Home ownership, it doesn't matter, right? You tried it on and you're like, this doesn't fit right. It's like that ill-fitting suit you were talking about, Nina. Let it point you towards what you would like instead, right? Rather than just fighting against what is, we need direction. So we can use what's not working, what doesn't feel authentic, what doesn't feel right, what feels false, and let it point us towards what is true for us, what is authentic for us, and what feels really in like luminous, radiant, exciting, that we're passionate about everything that we've been talking about today. That is your key to what is authentic for you. And I just want to invite you to not only do more of that and do it in safe ways for you, but I mean, really give yourself permission to understand that it is probably the most important thing you could do for the planet, for humanity, to find the things that you're passionate about that light you up, even if they're really freaking weird and do those more. I mean, we, we did it with hula hoops for a really long time and now we're doing it with weird things like light language. <laughs> And it doesn't matter what it looks like or what other people think about it. If it sets your heart like on fire and makes you feel alive, please do more of that because it'll infuse into every other aspect of your life, your relationships, your being, it'll raise your frequency and make you this magical magnet as well as a lighthouse for all of the other people to do the same. Let's just take a moment and imagine a world literally full of people who made choices that lit them up, that excited them, that made them feel whole, like really them. It's, it's so bright that I have to like close my mind's eye almost because it just, it's so shiny. And I feel like that is where we're headed. So mm, maybe we could together to set intention, to move towards more and more and more of that kind of authenticity and passion. Don't you want to live there? Oh, that literally like knocked me back. Oh, that was so good. <laughs> yes, I do want to live there for sure. Yeah, me too. And I love seeing how, like you were saying, there's so much evidence in so many areas, depending on where we look, of more of that. And I'm seeing like, there's so much expression on social media, TikTok, especially where people are like, this is me and they're owning their weird and then they're being celebrated and they're finding their, <clears throat> excuse me, they're finding their weird people because there is so many different industries and uh, niche niches for you know different specific interests um I do remember there was uh one of my business mentors talking about niching down and she was talking about how there's this um Instagram page Octonation where he's obsessed with octopuses and he'll be posting stuff about them all the time and she's like this is a niche because not everybody's obsessed with octopi but like this guy is and like he has found his people and I, it's just so fun to look out in social media and just see the different realms of interests that people are in but if those people that were creating like kind of spearheading the communities or you know expressing they weren't expressing their interests they wouldn't find their people they wouldn't relate in that way and um yeah sharing ourselves helps us to find 
others and that's like the beacon um i remember there's a meme you, i saw, first saw you posted ages ago aurora it's like um it was about owning our weird and waving it around like a beacon so that the other weirdos can find us and i'm like that so resonates because um it, if we're serving a watered down version of ourselves to the world then we're gonna find kind of like that level of real like resonance with people we may not find that full depth and if we're really owning it and we're going like yeah this is me then we're gonna find that depth and this is just so popping in this is just randomly popping in from ages ago I was I don't know how old I was I was definitely a, a child um, met a new girl in the neighborhood and I was like I still play Barbies, but I didn't want to tell her because I thought that would be embarrassing. And then it was like ages later, maybe like a couple months later, I found out that she likes Barbies and I like Barbies. And it's like, oh, we could have been playing, being, playing Barbies all this time. <laughs> and I'm, we didn't because I was too afraid to share that. And maybe she was too, I don't remember. Um, and then we probably play Barbies after that. But what a beautiful example that like, if we just really are brave enough to own what we like what our flavor is what our passions are in an authentic way and yes that sometimes can be vulnerable because that might turn people off but isn't that great because it's showing you that they're not for you um that that when we do that we can really find those people that we can play barbies with <laughs> and um and do you know or do whatever it is that you freaking love um so what a great reminder and it's um it's freeing it's freeing to come into that level of um true um vulnerability like it can be edgy and it can be scary but also for me it comes down to trust and like faith that the right people are going to be in my life even if i'm weird and over the top if it turns those pe certain people off that's okay. And it'll draw those people in. So it's like trusting, like deepening into that faith that the universe is conspiring in my highest good and that I'm attracting the right and perfect people into my life. Everybody just breathe that in. It is amazing as an intention and declaration. And there is that, that element of trust, right? If we are feeling unsafe, then we can't, we're like all squeezed up and closed off. And that's the opposite of that relaxed trust where we can express ourselves. So there is oftentimes the healing that we do get to do first before we can make it to this place. Like the three of us are speaking from this place where I think now we can say that, yeah, like, I mean, obviously there's more evolution and there's always more layers of authenticity as we evolve and, and we can go even deeper. But I feel like we lead a pretty damn authentic life at this point that we have consciously been creating and cultivating for years and years and years, right? It has been a journey. So it's okay if you're not there yet, but it's fun. It's so much fun. And so I'm so glad we can have this conversation where we can hold in our fields this example of what it looks like and then let it ripple out and give permission to other people to do the same, to be more authentic. So it is, again, too, like, you don't have to be doing it in a way that is like us, right? Somebody uh, messaged me the other day and was saying like, oh, I wanna be happy like you and teach me. And I, I haven't actually replied yet. So that reminds me, I replied a little bit, but have to reply more. I'm like, I don't want someone to be happy like me. I want you to be happy like you, do the things that, light you up because what makes me feel the most radiant aligned and and joyful is not going to be what lights up anybody else in that very specific combination right I, I do love octopuses though I think they're absolutely amazing and Nina I need to speak into you showing us an example of what it looks like to look for the good and for what we want it to be pointing us towards because social media uh, has been denigrated and Instagram specifically of fakeness, right? The fakeness. And um, 
I don't think there's a lot of that on my feeds. I'm actually not on Instagram very much at all, but like on Facebook, on TikTok, I see a lot of authenticity and I see a lot of passion because that's what makes me click follow or like or friend somebody, right? Like that expression of uniqueness. And so in any place, in any world, in any platform, there's going to be that spectrum, right? From fakeness and falseness to authenticity. But the authenticity comes with passion, right? It comes with people getting so excited about like 1940s Tupperware. And you're like, that's so niche. How can anybody else love it? But there are thousands, right? Thousands of people who are into it. And that passion is what shines through. And that's what makes other people go, oh, yes, more of this. And maybe it'll pique their curiosity and they'll wind up learning about it, right? That's what happened to us with a lot of things like light language and hula hooping, right? It was really weird. And people were like, mm, what is that? But hey, you know what? you feel really amazing. You feel happy. You feel passionate. You feel aligned. You feel lit up. And I want more of that. And then that gives permission for people to try it on and see if it's for them. And maybe it's not right. But that journey of finding the things that make you feel really alive is amazing. So please on this journey, like be open to trying out things that might seem really weird that you might be judgmental to at first, because you never know if that's going to be the thing or one of the things, there's never just one thing, right? That is going to really help you come into that wholeness and that passion and that, um, that feeling of just being so in the present moment. I think that's the other little key. If we are worried about the past or the future or whatever, we're not in the present moment. And I think the present moment is where the authenticity lies. You know, when we're just deep into it, it's where we can find our flow. It's where all good things live. Um, speaking about the Tupperware thing brought me back just to a little reflection on social media. And I actually saw that Instagram is changing their algorithm and they're going to be posting or like making videos and reels, I guess, more um, and higher value because they can't compete with TikTok. And I think that's just a huge reflection on society. People don't want the curated, like perfect looking. I don't want to look at that and feel shitty about myself. I want to go on TikTok and sometimes I end up on the weird parts of TikTok where the people, where the Tupperware or Corel enthusiasts are. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'll watch this for a minute and learn that people are really excited about these things. And that makes me excited, even though I'm not excited about those things. But I just love seeing that, it's finding that spark. You get to find your spark and see what people, lights people up. And um, that is what we're being attracted to. And so I'm so happy actually that Instagram is, you know, maybe they'll change and be a little more real. And I love that they actually call their reels reels because they're not real. It's like TikTok, but the perfect version of it, <laughs> I find. <laughs> um, if you know what their, their little short videos are called reels, but not R-E-A-L-R-E-E-L. -E -E so anyways, that's just my little like, uh, observation of where we're going as a society. So yay, yay for TikTok. I love it there. And I hope Instagram <laughs> follows suit. So I'll just share if you guys are not already on TikTok, um, you know, be caution, caution yourself because it can be a bit of a time suck. But you know, if you use it intentionally, as a way of connecting and finding cool things. It can be just so uplifting. You can find me there as um, Radiant Evolution and uh, Nina, I can't remember, are you Nina Infinity? Something like that. I can't remember. <laughs> Nina Infinity or it might be Nina underscore Infinity underscore. Mm, well, if they just type in Nina Infinity, I think that's how they found you. And I just unlocked three minute um, videos. So I think I'm gonna be on there a little bit more because I had been really off for a few weeks because it's just hard for me to distill what I want to say in 60 seconds or less. I really love this long form content, like having conversations. Can't wait to have a podcast. I love Facebook lives. I've never liked Instagram. So that I think part of the authenticity is a big part for me, but um, it is really, really fun to be able to have conversations that go deep like this one. This has been just such an uplifting, illuminating conversation that 
um, has made my heart feel expansive. If you've been watching, I hope that you are feeling really uplifted, inspired, and maybe excited to go learn more about octopuses or hula hooping or something Corel uh, Tupperware from the 1940s. Uh, Corel and Tupperware are two different things, pardon me. But really, it's about the passion. It's about the excitement. And you know what? There was a time in, I don't know, maybe the 90s or whatever, where it wasn't cool to be excited and everybody had to be like super bored with everything all the time. The existential ennui was very in and I just couldn't get behind it because you know what? It's not fun. If we're not excited about things, life just feels so flat and boring and depressing. So I wanna encourage you to find some way of playing a little bit more and you know what, there's there's so many different ways that you can do that. We have a place um, that I'd love for Nina, maybe you to chat a little bit about where if, if you're feeling like you need more of this excitement, this playfulness, this um, curiosity in your life, like where can they come hang out with us? We co-create a membership site called the Reading Evolution Collective Playground. And so what we do is it's a portal where you have access to amazing content, a library full of practices, meditations, movement, um, guided processes, belief repatterning, soul journey, journaling prompts, light language, and the most epic part, I, in my opinion, are the monthly ceremonies. So we all, all three of us co-create a monthly ceremony each month, and we also have a featured guest or a featured facilitator each month for a second ceremony. And so this month we are, our theme is Gaia. And so connecting with mother earth, connecting with the divine mother, um, which is actually, I'm just realizing in this moment is so divine that it's in cancer season, um, which is the sign of the mother, but we all vibe so much on connecting with the elements. And so a lot of the themes that we like to explore are rooted around the elements and the um, the way that we can come more into harmony and alignment as we connect with them. So in our Gaia theme this month, we will be connecting with our beautiful physical body temples, um, the earth, grounding and rooting, um, feeling her essence, because Gaia is like an, an energetic essence and Aurora will be our featured facilitator this month for the second ceremony. So it's such a beautiful, fun place to hang out, to connect with like-minded, like-spirited individuals, to glow up. And we're actually doing a glow up challenge this month, um, all about um, how we're nourishing our bodies each day. So we're, that's going on in the private um, Facebook membership, uh, Facebook, Facebook group. And so there's a lot of opportunities to, as I mentioned earlier, practice being in that authenticity and that safe, connected space with people that are on that same vibe. Uh, it's a great way to find people that are authentically, um, yeah, vibrate with, with you if you consider, if you feel, resonate as a light worker, as a star seed, as a way shower of this new earth that we're creating. Yeah, and I have to jump in with the so that. Here's the really important part. We have found that sacred play is the fastest way to get into alignment, body, mind, heart, and soul, and highest self, multidimensional self, so that we can become these conscious creators of our reality, like we were speaking about creating this new experience on the planet. It makes your manifestations and your creations so much more powerful and potent when we can come into that alignment and we use all of these practices that we all know we like should do, but don't always do by ourselves. And we use them together as a community. We have so many embodied practices that we support each other in doing, right? Like, you know, how when we would go to a, a workout class or get a much better workout if you're in a group fitness class or there's a personal trainer or somebody like telling you to do something, because it's hard to kick your own ass into gear, <laughs> right? And we do this so that we can fine tune our creation and manifestation abilities, right? I didn't even finish telling the story about the TikTok. I was saying about the um, 
the, I wanted longer form content, more of this in my life. And then I hadn't really been on TikTok and except for yesterday. And then today I, I logged on and I was like, oh, oh, look, I have three minute videos. It was a manifestation of my desire that came through almost instantly to be able to speak, to be able to go in deeper, to be able to share. And, you know, I would have gotten it eventually. They were rolling it out to everyone. But the fact that I had spoken that with my voice, with non-attachment and just let it out there, I want more long form content and ways to share my voice in my life. And then it just appeared for me. That is what happens when you raise your vibrational frequency and you play in these realms, manifestations and creations, co-creations with the universe happen so much more quickly. And play is one of the best ways to learn and seal it all into your head and create those muscle memories and neural pathways that are really going to support you. So we just got really geeky about all that. <laughs> I think the why is really important. And I want to share that more. And yeah, can you guys see how excited I am just talking about it? Because I am the living testament and so are these women about what happens to your life when you apply these principles, when you use them, when you consciously create and cultivate your vibrational frequency, just, it's magical. It's literally magical. So I'd love for you to come and play with us. The link is in the um, notes and it's also in the um, Facebook comments as well. Um, there's no um, commitment, right? You can try it for a month, you don't like it, that's fine, right? Not everyone's going to resonate with us. Not everyone's going to think the stuff that we do is the best because it, it might not be for you, but we love the dance, the breath, the light language, the manifestation, the creation, the play, all of that. It, it's so much fun for us. Yeah. So I hope that people here that are watching will um, like and subscribe again if you're on YouTube so you can get more of these conversations. And before we go, Nicole, is there anything that you wanted to add about the playground or authenticity or just that you feel needs to be shared out there? Playground, I'm just honestly so excited that we're actually bringing through Gaia as the theme this month because we work with the elements and each individually. And I know we each work with Gaia and it's just going to be such a magical month of being supported by her energy. And I'm already feeling it even more with... Um, with our glow up challenge that we're doing. We're on day three or four of it now. And her energy is just so there to support us. So if you feel like you need a little bit more support and being held, um, you know, come join us or work with Gaia on your own too. But I'm so excited for our ceremony, for uh, the, your Gaia class, for the dance uh, journey that I'm gonna be leading y'all on or there with me and for Nina's light language activation because hmm, Gaia to me just feels like pure embodied. I'm just like uh, melting into her like blissful realms right now. <laughs> hmm, so good. So yeah, if you want some of that, come and join us. Yeah, it's, it's so good. She's uh, as the wind has been kind of dancing with your curtains behind you. It's been really fun and playful to witness. And yeah, that's one of my gifts for many years. I've been able to um, channel Gaia and to bring people into embodied experiences of what she's like in meditation, soul journeys, ceremonies, and things like that. So it is uh, long overdue for us to dive deep into playing with her. She's one of our greatest allies to co-create and manifest magic in this world, right? She is also the living embodiment of all that is possible in creation. So yeah, Nina, do you have anything else you want to add about authenticity or Gaia before we sign off? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just that I'm so, um, so excited to co-create all of this this month with all of you and I'm just feeling so grateful for the opportunity to, to share in this way. So thank you to those who are watching. And my wish for you is that you can um, explore ways to practice being in your joy and your authenticity so that it can ripple out into all areas of your life. Breathe that in again. 
Again, let's just finish with that illuminating imagination because your imagination is the gateway to the multidimensional realm and it's one of the ways we can put intentions out there of what that world would look like if every single human is no longer holding themselves back from doing the things that bring them the most happiness, the most joy, the most excitement, the most passion. It is just illuminated with the light of what is it seven and a half billion souls it's so freaking bright that it just sends this light into the galaxy and the earth literally looks like a solar consciousness like the sun instead of a planet i think i'm just getting this download that this is one of the fastest ways that we can elevate our frequency as a collective right and as we are doing that it affects everything. Gaia herself, the consciousness of the planet, the rocks, the trees, the animals, the birds, the bees, all of it. Everyone, everything that is alive on this planet will be served by you doing what lights you up. And then that ripples out not only just through our world, but like into the universe. It ripples out through the all that is. So go on, go ahead, do the things. This is, if you've been waiting for your permission slip, here it is. What is that thing you've been wanting to do that you have held yourself back for because it was too weird or you're too old or whatever? Go ahead, do it now and let us know how it goes. It's been so delightful connecting with you. I love having these conversations. And look, I can't even stop smiling. It's like the fountain of youth to talk about all of these geeky things that make us so happy. So thank you for joining us next week. I think it'll just be Nina and Nicole as I will be um, just on a little road trip down to visit family. And um, yeah, we just look forward to connecting with you all again soon. Have a beautiful rest of your day.